my URL is veganstraightedge.com. Before my demo, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate everyone coming out and being a part of the community, especially the new people. Um, it's been five years for some of us, and it's been really great to see it grow and see new people come along and to see uh, our ideas kind of flourish and uh, sp spread. Whatever. David, can you hear me okay back there? Okay, um, okay so I did not do a um, technical thing today. I published a series of blog posts that I've been writing for a while. <clears throat> and it took me way longer than I thought, so I did not get to interviewing anyone today, and I did not uh, start a podcast yet. I still hope to, I still plan to. Um, so I, I created six of the seven pages that I planned to. So the first one is... So veganstraightedge.com slash IndieWeb is just a page, which means it's not in the, the time stream, my feed of normal post. Um, It'll be a, a living page that will grow as sort of a table of contents for this series. It's launching with five articles, but I have another 30 or so planned um, because I have tons of time to write. <clears throat> so I, these first five are from the perspective of different questions. What is the indie web? You know, why should I get on it? Uh, how can you get on it? Uh, where is it? And who is it? Um, so each of those is just a blog post um, on my site. Um, but I also made a point of syndicating each one to Medium because Medium gets a lot of distribution and attention. Um, and I also have a WordPress.com account, which is just veganstraightedge.wordpress.com. So I syndicated them to there as well. And finally over here to Tumblr, which is also veganstraightedge.tumblr.com. And at the bottom of both Tumblr and WordPress, I just manually wrote a little paragraph that has a link back to the original and a rel canonical attribute and uh, a class of U URL and U UID to say this is a link to the, the real proper original uh, at the bottom of WordPress as well. And then finally, or not finally, one last thing. Um, uh, Medium gives you that for free or automatically if you use their import story feature. So rather than just copy and pasting your post, if you actually copy and paste your URL into their imports, you then have to kind of massage the content if it sort of parses wrong and stuff. But they put this sweet canonical URL at the bottom. I think that's really great. And then finally, at the bottom of each of my posts, which is pretty small because it's just meta stuff, but I'll zoom in a ton here. Um, I have a link to Medium, WordPress, Tumblr, and then also Twitter, the, the tweets about each of these articles. So I think this is my most syndicated thing. It's out to four endpoints other than my own site. And um, uh, a handful of people proofread these articles for me and gave me uh, notes and ideas, and I appreciate that from them. Um, and Gregor and Kyle and Tontek have all been writing uh, a lot of long form stuff lately, and I uh, have been really enjoying that. And I hope that more of you do that as well, because I like to read more than just short notes and tweets. Although Sandro does not. Uh, that is it for me. Thank you for your time. Okay, uh, this isn't going to take five minutes. I hope. Uh, Let's see, this is what I want, it's the browser. Uh, this started uh, back in uh, a little bit before the basketball season started, so you're gonna see some things here that look more like basketball than uh, what uh, I started out with. Uh, this was, um, this is where things are supposed to end up. Uh, this is the book on Lean Pub. And uh, about a week and a half ago, I decided to actually write the book in public on a book down site, and that is this guy. Uh, the book down site I put up live last night so I could get all the DM, uh, DNS wrangling uh, done, make sure it would work. Uh, I'll give you the 
the URL is too long to write down. Uh, just go to ZNMEB underbar DFS uh, Daily Fantasy Sports on Twitter, and it's in the promo because I had to do that to get uh, Indie Off to work. So after the website went up, I put Indie Auth on it and then went to webmention.io, which should be... I'm not going to show you that one. There's the Twitter account. And let's see. So then I said, okay, I've got web mentioned. Now how about Bridgie? So there's Bridgie. And it's listening for responses now. So if you, if you, I guess if you send a web mention to this URL here, um, Bridgie will see it, and and then I'll see it. And uh, last but not least, I'm going to test that. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to put, I'm going to tweet out a link and see what happens. So I'm going to go here, copy that guy, and go here, paste it. And it's loading. Oh, yes. I'll fix that. Oh, I'll just take the image off because there's no image there. Direct link, yes. Distribution channels. I only want this one. I don't want Google Plus. Share his image off. And publish. Now that should send a bunch of stuff happening all over the internet. It should come back to me. I don't know how long this takes. So, uh, Bridgie polls. I'll go back to Bridgie. Okay, let's go back to Bridgie. Now, do I tell it to poll or poll now? Oh, polling now, yeah. Oh, okay, that would be this guy, right? Uh, yeah. There it is. There it is. How about that? It's these guys. Now, why did it go to medium? Hmm. Oh, well. Anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. NotEnoughNeon.com, also NotEnoughNeon on Twitter, and uh, so this is Freddy. This is a build proof of concept of indie web uh, crawling technology. Uh, this just crawls a single thread. So one problem I've had with um, with uh, indie web readers is that you you only see a small portion of the thread. Uh, so here's an example where I replied to a post, um, Kyle replied to me, I only see these three posts here and I can try to drill down into these and maybe see some more context but it's very hard to see what happened in this entire thread. So if I paste um, any of the links from these posts into here,
So what this is going to do, it's going to crawl this thread, fetch all of those posts, and then display them sorted by date. So you can see there. So this is open source. I published it on GitHub. GitHub slash not enough neon slash thready. Thank you. Hi everybody, I'm uh, Gregor. My website's gregorlove.com. Um, I wanted to add local search today uh, to be able to search my notes and my articles. Um, I do have event posts, I didn't get to searching that. I don't have a good uh, addition to my UI, like a link for it yet, so I just put it at the very bottom. So if I want to find everything that I said about Portland, I'll find that I have 24, and by default it will sort, um, sorry, speaking back this way, by default it will sort uh, most recent first. Um, I do have date filtering too, so let's say I wanted to find only the ones that I posted uh, this year. Oops. So most of my posts were this year, there's 22, and then I could also do, say I only want the ones uh, before this year. It needs to be an easier way to clear these fields. I'm not sure why I got a different number there than I expected, but anyway, that's my demo. <laughs> um, so my my goal was to be do a scalable thing um, and realistic goal. Oh, I'm I'm Lillian, uh, and my uh, URL is anomaly.net. Um, last year at Indie Web Camp, I decided to redesign my entire website, and that was a terrible idea. Uh, just from like the perspective of, you can't really do that in a day. Um, so my goal today was to update the front page of my website, which actually took pretty much the entire day. So um, uh, realistic goals this year. Um, so my the front page of my website. It's 2016, so I went and looked on the Wayback Machine. Um, so this is what my website looked like this morning. Um, just the same pictures and copy. I looked on archive.org. Um, you have to go back to 2010 to not have the front page look the same. Uh, so uh, this, this is the last time my front page looked like, oh man, it's taking forever to load. It is up there, right? Okay. Uh, yeah, apparently this doesn't want, oh, there we go. Yeah, this is what it looked like in 2010, and in 2011, it looked, oh wait, I guess, 2000. Uh, 2012, it looked nearly identical to how it looked this morning. Um, so I updated it and now I have pictures that don't look like me eight years ago on it and my actual job title and this box down here has contact information which my website actually didn't have um, instead of a email subscription box that goes to an email list I don't have. So yay! <laughs> Hi, I'm Kyle Mahan, KyleWM.com. Um, so my goal, uh, actually, I would super recommend this. Like, this is the first time that I've had like an easy goal and like a stretch goal, <laughs> and I would super recommend that because reaching the easy goal is like absolutely as far as I can make it, and I feel still decent about it. Um, so this is the reader that I showed the other day, and I wanted to add a little bit of offline. I wanted to add the service workers, um, a service worker that would register when you load it and would um, 
do something when it's offline. And so I just loaded the reader here, and you can see in the little Chrome developer panel um, that it loaded the serviceworker.js. There's a little debugging information there. Um, but the cool thing is when I'm, if I'm offline, instead of showing an error, it shows a woodwind page that says, I'm offline and it feels so good. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and a cool thing, like, uh, I guess it's sort of a motivating factor that, um, you know, Chrome, Google is getting people to implement this by saying, like, okay, you've implemented this nice uh, service worker stuff and you add a little bit of a manifest to describe your app. And then, I mean, oh, sorry, I need to explain this. I, I made a video from my phone. Um, so this is my phone because I didn't know how to connect it to the TV. But, um, so I'm going to open Woodwind in Chrome uh, in the browser here, and it takes a second to load. And then normally, once you load it, if you load it a couple times, it'll pop up a little, um, a little widget on the bottom that says, do you want to add this to your home screen? Uh, because I'd already done that earlier, I think, it wouldn't do that for the demo. Uh, I guess it only wanted to do it once, so I had to add it manually here. Like I clicked on the little menu bar and went down to add to home screen. Um, but then doing that, it pops up on the home screen as like an app and loads this sweet little like uh, app looking thing. Um, yeah. And then like, you can see when I was making the video because Shane was doing his demo <laughs> or had just done his demo. Um, yeah, and it's in the task switcher like, a, like an app separate from Chrome. And ideally, if it had more offline behavior or it would actually like remember what you were looking at the last time you had it open, you could open it offline, uh, you know, on the train or whatever when you don't have a connection and at least be able to look at what you were looking at before, you know, keep reading down the stream or leave a comment on somebody's page and it would go ahead and send it when you reconnect later. So that's where I want to go with it, but that's as far as I got today. Um, my name is Sandro. I have a bunch of URLs because I can't pick one yet, but hawk.org will work well enough. Um, I mentioned at the beginning I was going to try to do like a photo reader that based itself on the likes that people posted. I didn't nearly get there, but um, so I spent most of the day just trying to gather likes from people. I only found three people's sites who I could get likes from using not really special cased code. Um, so it's just Kyle and Amy and Aaron's likes that I gathered. Um, and I guess if you think you're using the same kind of... Uh, and so this, the not special case code uses the microformats um, dash node microformats parser um, looks in, in feed or not in feed for H entries, uh, looks for like of things there, um, looks for rel equals prev to page through pages. And at that, it, so Amy's stuff, it wasn't paged, um, Aaron's and Kyle's was paged, so I just crawled through those. Um, got a few hundred likes, and then just to do something with that, because I didn't really have time to write much. Um, I just sorted them by the things that were liked by all three of you, or just two of you or one. So this is like the top 20 liked things. Um, and, uh, and and I pointed out to Amy, and she thinks I have a bug in counting likes that aren't there. So I, 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 it could be a mistake here. But um, So, and then if you scroll down, there's the list of actually which sites it says thinks likes them. This is at hawk.org slash indie dash liked.html if you want to poke at it more closely. Okay. You want to try to use mine or do you think you've got to work? Oh, right. you, okay. Oh, all right, great. Um, hi, my name's uh, Tom Brown. Here's Tom with weather.com. About a month ago, I uh, migrated my blog over to the, uh, in the Jekyll IndieWeb project by Michael Bishop. And uh, the, the problem 
uh, when I arrived here today was that uh, s sending web mentions I was having to do manually. Um, after I'd do a post, I'd use the uh, web mention gem and uh, the command line would send out a web mention. So I wanted to automate that so I didn't have to do that anymore. Um, on the IRC channel, Michael mentioned uh, that he'd been using Travis to accomplish this. Um, I thought that was uh, too much for me to uh, do today. So what I did was I'm just like, uh, my deployment is just using Gitosis to, uh, to uh, get my uh, posts up. So I just added to a post receive hook to run a little Ruby script. So at the bottom, you can see the, the web mentions I added uh, in an automated way. And uh, let's see, there we go. Probably can't see that. <laughs> oh, well, any, it's too small, right? Oh, Command Plus? Apple Plus. Oh, well, uh, it said uh, just, uh, oh, you want to try it? Okay, uh, at just uh, github.com, here's some of the other. Here's the uh, post receive. Um, it, uh, the last line is the important one. Um, after it uh, updates the code, um, it calls this Ruby script called uh, send web mentions. And then uh, sub w send web mentions, um, it just, uh, it has the date of the last time uh, I deployed. And then if there are any, uh, it, it, it parses the XML feed for the site. And if there are any posts uh, that have a date later than the last deploy date, then I uh, use the web mention client to, to send the web mentions. And so I uh, got a really uh, poor man's uh, automated web mentions now. Thank you. So I am Cassie, and my personal URL is cassie.wtf, but I mostly did work on sensible.mn today. Um, you can see that, let me enlarge this a little bit. So this is what uh, the slash blog site looked like this morning. Oh, yeah, my bad. Um, so this is what the slash blog site looked like this morning. Um, you can see it's a little weird with uh, the posts. Those buttons didn't actually work. Um, and then images were also not functional. Um, the images were all there in the database. It just wasn't redirecting properly um, to a subdirectory, which is where we are running this. But now... Uh, It looks like this, which is much happier and how it's supposed to look. And it does things that are nice and work. And we have images, yay! Um, so thank you, Ben. He sat down with me for a few minutes and hacked through this and got it all working. So it looks much better now. Okay. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm Jesus, my URL is jfrndz.com, uh, today I work, oh, jfrndz.com, better? Sure. Alright, um, also on the screen, so, um, great, uh, so today I worked on, uh, just kind of improving some of my juggle workflows and doing a few things that, um, kind of some maintenance tests I've been kind of putting off. Uh, so I'll go through them quickly. Some of them don't really have, I guess, kind of a lot of visual effect. Um, actually, first off, I switched a lot of my asset store, uh, uh, my Jekyll site is in a Git repo, and I moved all of my uh, images and media assets in uh, into Git LFS. Um, then I fixed an issue with uh, my uh, the juggle command plugin that I was using to generate posts. So now I have, actually there's a good example here, uh, I have uh, full timestamps uh, with time zones and everything. I was just getting a date before. Um, kind of looked like that. Um, so um, that's kind of nice. Um, so now I can actually do things uh, like, so this post um, kind of, oh, actually I thought it was going to show up with um, a a time stamp. Oh well. Anyway, um, then the other thing is I created a little uh, just about page to kind of break off, um, kind of some more uh, kind of detailed 
profile info. Um, that's it. Pretty short. <laughs> Jim, uh, and uh, I talked to you, by the way, okay. I'm Jim, uh, I talked to maybe two-thirds of the people here today, and I got to do a quick little onboarding survey, and I just sort of wanted to talk and collect information about how people thought, uh, how to get more people into the indie web community, and uh, the, the, I started by creating a persona, which would be like a person who is um, non-technical, but maybe web savvy, and how, what would be, uh, if they knew you, and they looked up to you as an expert, and they came to you for help, and they asked for uh, just some pointers to where to get started, where would you send them? And so that was sort of the question I asked, and I just took notes and used that as a starter for a con conversation. And uh, I took all the notes on Etherpad, and so this URL here has all the notes. Um, if I could just summarize quickly, I think there was a lot of commonality, but there was a lot of different uh, answers as well. And uh, the most common thing was like, don't use GoDaddy. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> um, and it was also was very common was like, it depends, like, you know, depending on who the person is and what they want to do. There's different solutions. Um, some people, uh, it's a learning process, and some people just want to quickly get something up and writing, or they maybe want to do more like a business card type of website. Um, there's, they can use a, a, a platform such as Tumblr or Medium if they just want to do some writing. Um, if you have your own domain name, that's, that's pretty much all you need to be to call yourself IndieWeb, because then you can just switch it. You know, if you want to, you, you can rescue your content, move it to another thing, and you're, you know, you're okay. So, um, going beyond that, uh, WordPress was quite a common uh, thing, and then also static site hosting. Uh, so, like Jekyll, um, the, I think the generally speaking, like Jekyll or uh, any sort of static platform is generally considered to be a little bit more advanced. And then going beyond that, then you get into sort of the indie, indie web realm where you have web mentions and things like that. And that was generally considered to be, you don't really have to have that to call yourself indie web. Um, but, you know, that's sort of like what we're sort of working on here, the more advanced, it's just a more advanced skill. And then going into the future, there's going to be potential for building apps, which um, like Woodwind, uh, which will be able to pull in information in standard formats and have more of an experience, much more like using Twitter or Facebook, and but be able to consume all these independent sources of information. So that's what I found out. And so the, your, the URL for the, my notes are right there. So uh, just because this presentation may put all of you to sleep, um, I want everybody to take a deep breath in through their nose, out through their mouth. <laughs> Very good. Everybody feeling relaxed? Right. <laughs> as, many, as many times as you want. What? I was getting to that. <laughs> Um, if you don't remember from, be, from previous events, my name is David, david.chansky.com. I also appear in other places under various other names. And uh, today I did something boring. So I'm going to talk about the boring thing that I did. So this is david.chansky.com. This is the web mention endpoint that's standard in WordPress, which is, of course, a query stream, web mention equals endpoint. And then when you do that, if you don't post anything, it says this lovely source is missing message. It doesn't check to make sure that you've exactly provided the endpoint correctly because it will pretty much, no matter what you put as long as the word web mention isn't there, it'll pretty much do it. So here is where I do my test site and I have rewritten it to a nice little pretty permalink called just web mention. And if you don't send anything into it, 
you get this lovely little form styled with the theme of your WordPress site that asks you where you link to, where you're linking from, and of course, I stole this text from Aaron, but I haven't come up with anything of my own on that yet. So that will actually work. And just for so that people are actually forced to put in the correct URL, if you put in anything else, it'll redirect to the WordPress not found page. I did a bunch of other stuff, but you can't see it. <laughs> so this is the only thing I could actually demo. Everything else was around making that better in the background. So since you can't actually see any of that, this is the only... De Unless, uh, let's see, see now on... See now on this line, what I did is... I couldn't resist, anyway. And uh, on one other thought, um, after much deliberation based on yesterday's conversation, I couldn't decide on a proper name for an alternative web mention plugin. Um, although I did really enjoy the um, whimsy of Uber mention as a name. I forget who suggested that. Somebody in here did. So I just went with the, with the simpler web mentions and more. while you were being creative, I go by the webman julianloring.com or I won't sign up here on Twitter or sick on Sunday on Flickr <laughs> and I put all the photos of you on my, no that's wrong, sorry, on my uh, office's Flickr account, callback, hello Yoshi, and here you can see the best 266, oh no, 272 photos out of 600 and 60, which I took yesterday. So um, maybe tomorrow or when I get back home, I will post the rest of today's selection. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki, AaronPK.com. Um, my original plan was to post, uh, to get screenshots of my bookmarks, um, but I had a little mini diversion in the middle of the day, and um, I updated Teacup, which is the app that I use to um, track what I eat and drink. I updated Teacup to let me upload photos as well, because clearly what the internet needs is more pictures of food. Um, especially, quickly take a picture. Especially, yeah. So, uh... I now have the ability to post photos of my food, which I'm kind of not like super happy about the fact that I'm kind of enjoy that, but here here we are. Um, <laughs> uh, I I I'm planning on only take only posting pictures of interesting looking food. We'll see what happens. Um, in the meantime, here is my coffee from this afternoon. Um, I made sure to get the Indie Camp stickers in the background for context. Uh, so that was, that was one thing I did, uh, and then I did actually get the bookmark thing working. So I sketched out um, how this app is going to work for, uh, for Reels once I build it into an actual service you can sign into. Those are just sketches in my notebook, um, but then separately I wrote the actual code that does the hard work. Uh, so this is what my bookmarks used to look like. Um, just a list of uh, the title, the domain name it's from, and then sometimes I post a little excerpt. Um, and now they look like this. So uh, each one has now a screenshot. And um, this, uh, sometimes this happens because I think this website is rendered with JavaScript. So... Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure the Twitter one worked well, so even with the little pop-up thing. Uh, I don't know. So uh, this is wor this works with a library called WKHTML PDF, and it uses a headless X server to render it in Magic Land, and um, <laughs> it works. <laughs> That's called the cloud. It's actually Ben's cloud. So funny story. <laughs> 
is it was working fine on my laptop. I went to go launch it on the server. It didn't work. All these dependencies needed to be installed. Didn't have time. I was five minutes before the end, and I was like, hey, Ben, let me just use your version of this that you launched. Running the same software, he got it to work fine. So the way this is working and it's live is it's actually just using Ben's service to generate the image. Um, I swear I will switch it back to my own. <laughs> I'm not going to use up all your bandwidth, but... Uh, in the meantime, it now posts these so that you could see them, so that I actually had something to show. You could link that statically. I've run that before. So, uh, yeah, the end. Thanks. Okay, so I'm I'm Tontek, uh, Tontek.com, and William Madison of BlindInsight.com. And uh, we spent some time at the beginning of our hack day uh, working on the IndieWebCamp.com homepage. Um, and so William pointed out to me that uh, the icons that we have here that we added at uh, Indie Web Camp SF 2014 uh, had some pretty poor default MediaWiki alt text. Things like uh, something like PNG 11563.png. Yep. yep. Super descriptive alt text instead of say heart. Yep. Uh, so we, we went through a process of like first we fixed that. Um, so these now have like heart icon. Uh, this thing looks like a connected network icon. This looks like a uh, driving uh, yeah, steering wheel icon. And so we got that. So all of a sudden, at least we weren't reading uh, gibberish uh, if you were using a, a screen reader. So that was really good. But then the next thing was uh, none of the content inside uh, was really accessible because it was just kind of like one big uh, chunk of text with BRs and such. And so we added the. Um, these, uh, your content is yours, you are better connected, you are control, are now H3 um, headings, which means that um, if we listen yeah, to and, them. Yeah, and that's really, it's really important for, for ease of navigation. Um, whether the rules are, you know, you know, put your headings wherever, um, being able to navigate with a screen reader by headings is really, really necessary. This was able to give me the ability to navigate and know what was going to come. And that was, that was really helpful. It helped me be able to move through the website much faster um, than just having to go from one element to the next and, you know, take my chances, basically. So we did that, and then uh, while I was uh, eavesdropping on his, uh, uh, what's the name of the tool again? The text, the, the, the screen reader? Oh, um, TalkBack Talk on back. Android. Uh, I, I would hear it once in a while going, column one, row one, column two, row two. I'm like, where is that coming from? And then I looked at the source, and it turns out that this whole thing with the, uh, you know, your content is yours, you're better connected, better connected, you're in control, was originally built with a table. Oh, oh yay. So it's like, okay, it doesn't even look like a table. It's not a tabular data. This is purely like tables for layout. Bad, bad, bad. Uh, I think I remember seeing this on the wiki source a while ago. And I was like, oh, I'll get to it eventually. And this was like, no, this is not <laughs> tolerable. We need to fix this right now. <laughs> so, uh, so we did. And uh, yep. this is now all done with pure CSS. Um, it should look pretty much the same as you saw before. Uh, I know a little bit about CSS, so that's, that helped. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so that so we got through that and we're like great so now the whole first part of the site uh, home page like reads pretty well and then like join the indie web headings beyond all that and then we got to a homebrew website club and then what happened then we had a picture and but it only showed you know indie web camp May 21 of 2014 link what does that mean where does it go it like didn't tell me anything so what was happening was when you got to the Humber Website Club uh, H3, uh, heading three, the very first thing after that was this image, which again, we use MediaWiki's default way to link an image. And what it does is it links to the thing with the alt text of the uh, destination page, which was Homebrew Website Club 24, you know, 2014-05-21, which made it sound like, oh, let me go check out with this homepage. Oh, they've got a Homebrew Website Club. Oh, the most recent one was May 21st, 2014. Oh, wow. That's really? That's pretty lame. Clearly, these guys uh. haven't done anything in two years. Uh, so that, what I basically did there was a little bit of content reordering. I said, okay, well, yeah, we want the image kind of to the top, but it doesn't need to be the very first thing, which is giving that misimpression. So I just dropped it down a bunch, uh, just one paragraph worth. And so now, when you read that H3 heading, 
the first thing it reads is the description. Homebrew Website Club is a bi-weekly meetup of creatives passionate about designing, improving, building, and actively using their own websites, sharing their successes and challenges with the like-minded and supportive community. And then we did one more thing, <laughs> which is we... Link one. Oh, yeah. What does it mean? Link one. It was about the meetings? Yeah. For, no, yeah. Yes. And then just link one. Anybody have any ideas? Really? Yeah. Anybody? First link. Really? Link one. Hmm. So, so yep. the only way to find out was to click on it. But why would I want to do that to a link one? Where is it going to take me? What is it going to download? Is it a footnote? No, MediaWiki has this bad habit of if you just put a link in with brackets around it, it turns it into a bracket one bracket. And that reads link one. And that's it. And you have no idea, like, well, does this something I want to click on or not? And and if you're not using a mouse, you can't hover over it to see where it's going. Yeah. So all it is is link one, link two. And I run across it on Wikipedia all the time. And it is annoying as heck because my screen reader, I can give a command for it to read all. And so it will read, but it will read up to a link and stop. And then I have to navigate past the link and then have it read more and then it'll get to the link and stop. And a lot of those are link one, link two, because they're footnotes. And it's horrendous for navigation and actually getting information. And I leave sites, you know, where it's difficult. So. <laughs> Not that, not that I'm aware of. So that that was so. What we did is, I just said, well, that that detail is actually already that bracket one bracket link that was like some other detail about Homer Website Club. The Homer Website Club page itself already had that detail, so I could I just made a content decision, be like, you know what, that doesn't belong on the homepage. Cut, done. Um, and it really kind of revealed how much like it, it's useful to minimize content to just what you need and not like try to be super thorough per se. The photo, uh, the other thing we did there is we changed the alt of the photo to say, this was an interesting hack because I didn't realize it worked like this. If you put like a description on the photo that's like, oh, here's a photo of uh, Homebrew Website Club SF and da da da, and then it reads that and then it reads the caption over that as, as well. So it sounds like it's like repeating itself yep. and that just sounds super lame. So instead what you can do is in a case like this where you have a photo and then immediately the caption after, I changed the alt text to photo of uh, past event, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then it just read photo of past event graphic, homebrew website club, twenty fourteen oh five twenty one. Yep. And that's like, oh, okay, like uh, it's a photo of a past event. That doesn't mean that was the most recent event. It's just that, and you can keep reading, and and that really helped kind of improve the comprehension as well. Yeah. So, yeah. And then and then I could click on it, and then it would take me to an article as well where yep. that picture is, and. So it made it understandable, that like, oh, I could go there and I could read about that event, but it's not telling me that this was the last event. So, so a lot of little lessons learned about uh, it's kind of like MediaWiki's like default inaccessible or poorly accessible uh, behavior and kind of ways to potentially avoid that. So um, that I, I feel like there's some documentation we can add there saying, hey, if you're writing a wiki page, like here's some MediaWiki pitfalls to avoid. Uh, and by the way, here are ways to, if you do things like you have a photo uh, with a caption, here's how you can write good alt text so that it like actually reads as one smooth thing together um, rather than like repeating yourself um, or anything else like that. And I think the, 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 the end consequence of this is that like the editing of the content down and simplifying a little bit actually improved the homepage for everybody. Um, so that, that's sort of like, I guess the lesson I want to kind of end with is that uh, any, any like iteration where you're like improving a, a web page for accessibility is more than likely to actually end up improving it for uh, everyone, uh, which is which obviously is a good thing. So we got a question from uh, Actually, yeah. I just wanted to comment that uh, if you're using WordPress, there's a really great plugin that I use called WP Accessibility Plugin that will auto-correct a bunch of common errors for screen readers. Um, really? Yeah, okay. it does like, it'll enable skip links and do a bunch of like WebKit stuff, and it also, if you want, can find every single image alt tag so that you can 
uh, correct them um, so that they can actually be voter descriptions. Um, so yeah, if you're using WordPress, I recommend doing the accessibility plugin. Okay. Cool. All right. Awesome. I recommend that. The one thing I want to say about Alt is. I tried just correcting it directly from the image, and that gave, that's what gave the sort of suboptimal result of repeating itself. So I'm going to actually make an exception there and say, when you're adding the alt text for an image, you need to be editing it in context of the text before and after, not like in a vacuum. And, and if you do it in a vacuum, chances are you're going to end up repeating something nearby, or it's just not going to make sense out of context. So uh, alt text needs to make sense in context. Yeah, the WP accessibility also strips title um, attributes from images and certain content. Okay. okay. That's cool. Awesome. Yes. Uh, there are also uh, some uh, really good uh, browser extensions for uh, accessibility evaluation. Um, there's uh, the, this Wave uh, Chrome extension, uh, web, web accessibility mm -hmm. verification or something. Um, mm -hmm. and it'll just look at sites and, and it's, uh, it, it will spot things that are Yeah, and, and one of the things for, for apps, I know we weren't working on apps specifically, but if you are on Android um, and you are an app developer or you know an app developer, have them install, um, I, I believe it's Accessibility Screener uh, by Google. Google just released it about a month ago, and it goes into your app and actually figures out, you know, you have an unlabeled button 47. Um, I have tried to communicate with Pocket Cast because everybody on Android loves Pocket Cast. One issue is I can't get in contact with them because they're all on Twitter. Two, I have left a review with a one star. And I, it's not that I don't like their product, but the fact that I couldn't get any contact with anybody who would address the accessibility issue and that a lot was going on there was that I couldn't even search for a podcast. My wife had to do it for me because the search wasn't correct. So if go get accessibility screener for for Android especially, um, and then follow the rules on Apple. You know, Apple for the iPhone has got accessibility rules, and please, please for your apps do it because it will help you think differently. Cool. Awesome. Thanks everyone. Thank you. But again, I'm Scott Gruber. Um, this was a really good session. Um, okay, so I was uh, trying to work on post types for articles and notes, and um, I started with uh, setting up my user page on the Indie Web Camp, and uh, I implemented, I think, um, being able to authorize uh, using Indie Auth to sign in with my domain, and that's how I was able to create this page. And uh, um, on the site, on my site, it's scottgruber.me, I um, wanted to start writing about how I set up SSL and uh, also um, get some microformats going on my notes and articles. And um, I was able to, you know, start with a, a good draft. I think, uh, and uh, I need to definitely copy edit it. Um, but I was able to add uh, um, related articles and also categories. So if I hit a category, it'll pull up any article that's tagged with category or any note that's tagged with category or books, but I don't have any tagged with that. And um, I can add, uh, um, um, you know, again, the categories will go here. I can also add related articles, and um, and if I uh, was able to validate that my um, notes were working with the micro formats, and need to still add some posse and some photos, and it worked also I think on articles as well. So I was like, um, I'm very stoked, um, and want to thank everyone for letting me hack away today. Um, and that's what I got.
forgot to mention something before. Does everybody know what Bridgie is? Yeah. Everybody basically familiar with Bridgie? Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, in case anybody doesn't, it's a tool for sort of sucking your like responses and your feedback from social networking sites. Um, so like, you post your stuff on your own site, share it to Twitter, or Facebook, or Instagram, or Google Plus, I think, or Flickr, and it uh, grabs the comments and brings them back and posts them on your site. Um, so Snarfed, the the main developer Ryan posted some stats in the channel that he wanted somebody to share, or he asked if somebody wanted to share. So as of today, Bridgie has, has had over 3,000 users, 500,000 web mentions sent successfully to 100,000 unique domains, no, 1,000 unique domains, 4 million responses handled total, so like likes and comments and everything, uh, 13,000 posses through Bridgie Publish, and my guess is this is the one he's the most proud of because this was twice or four times this a couple weeks ago, two months ago. Uh, it costs about one cent per user per month right now to run. Nice. Yep, that's cool. Is everyone sugar, sugar crashing? Is that what's going on? Uh -huh. We're all done. Nap time. Yeah, I see that. Okay. I saw the eyes drooping and. Uh, so that was like some really awesome demos, you guys. That was pretty sweet yeah, stuff built in a day. So great job to all of you. Yeah.